Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. I'd like to welcome uh, all the YouTube watchers that are, uh, are have been joining us, and I'd like to kind of bring you up to speed a little bit along the way. Some of the language that we use here and some of the thought process, and uh, it was just jogged by several people who uh, have uh, recently gotten COVID and uh, gotten sick from COVID as a uh, uh, just recently, and it's uh, yeah after years of of not having had uh, had that problem, and uh, so the question came up like, well, what do we do about this? And uh, I mean, the primary thing is is keep doing what you're doing to the extent that you can, but pace yourself so that you are. You're not overtaxing, but you want to keep something moving, particularly stuff, this internal work that allows you to keep the energy moving. Because what that does is it creates a, a positive environment for your body mind to learn from, from the event, to learn from the fact that it just had, had this viral infection. And with it, there's your immune system is getting an upgrade because all that information that came into there that that which doesn't kill me makes me stronger kind of idea is it allows you to then uh, to have more tools going forward so that your your natural immunity to things like this is enhanced to some degree and i believe that if you continue to work with your internal energy, your chi, continue to build that, then you're going to be able to come out of it with a, come out of it stronger than, than when you went in. You know, if you, you know, feel uh, victimized by the illness, then you're going to have that hanging over you and it will actually kind of pull you back. So you want to just say, okay, we, we, we did that thing. We did that little dance with the coronavirus and we're moving, moving forward from here. And so it allows us to then uh, develop that internal strength that enables us to, to not be affected by the, uh, a lot of the obstacles of life including viral infections, but it goes beyond that. So the more, the more you are able to consciously go through that process and build on it, then you're able to then go forward with even more tools at your disposal. So one of the things I guess apropos of this is uh, a distinction that I make and I'd like to clarify, particularly for those people who maybe you haven't been involved, but I think everybody could stand a little bit of uh, uh, of this because then we're going to get into actually doing some stuff with it from the frame of mind. And I want to make a clear distinction between what we talk about with chi, which for our purposes is internal energy. It's the bio energy of your body, mind, and your relationship to your environment. So it that that energy that that keeps you going that gets you up in the morning and keeps you going through the day that you know and even allows you to sleep at night that chi is is a specific uh set of relationships that you have with the world the distinction i like to make is between chi and jin j-i-n which is combination of chi and your physical strength. So what we're talking about here is more than just the energy, more than just getting lots of chi, which is really cool and absolutely vital for your health and well-being is having lots of energy and circulate it well. But jin is the ability to express it in the world, to execute with your energy and there, it's a relationship between your physicality, your physical strength, your li, L-I, and your, 
and your energy. And you can think of it as a spectrum. So if we put the, the physicality at the lower end of the spectrum, the as say in the red zone and the infrared zone, and we go all the way across all the colors of the spectrum where the chi and the li, the, the physical strength, the ratio changes as we move toward the ultraviolet end of the spectrum. So as you move toward that finer and finer energy, there's less and less physicality involved and more gets done just with the energy itself. And so you can think of like, you know, say the energy Obi-Wan Kenobi, you know, these are not the droids you're looking for. The energy that is, that is being displayed in, in that kind of context, which we see in, in various martial artists as well, is a lot gets done just by shifting your state of being, just by shifting your spirit, your shen in the, uh, in the situation and requires less actual physical involvement. But all that is, is dependent on your physicality as well. So even in, in that, that example, the Obi-Wan Kenobi one, there is some physicality involved, even though the actual effect is created across a distance without physical contact. There are exercises that we do where you're you're moving someone from a distance, but it's you are interacting with their with their energy field, and they're able to kind of go with that. And it's usually done as a cooperative exercise, and I've never seen anybody actually do it without cooperation. But it it actually works very very nicely, and it's something that is you know you can practice learning how to how to move someone from a distance and influence them just by bumping against their energy field. So, and then that you can, with a very light touch, you, with a light energy touch, you can actually cause someone to veer whatever with that from a distance. But that's also founded on the physicality. That is the, more, the denser realm of, of the, Jin, which has more and more physicality, gives you a foundation to build on that so that you have this, like, you know you can do it with your, with your physicality, and then you get the confidence to be able to do with less and less actual muscular effort involved. So we are developing that. So the Jin is we start off by really working with the denser realm. That is, our movements are we're getting in touch with a feeling in the movement. So we're actually getting getting the feeling of these things, so that enables us to have a, uh, a direct control over our body, our ability to regulate our bodies then allows us to regulate our energy, which then allows us to regulate our minds, which then allows us to regulate our spirit. And that is a gradual process. And then we're learning how to, to access the different parts of that spectrum. The easiest one to jump onto is the physical one, but we want to, right from the start, we want to have it, this marriage of of our spirit and our intention, our awareness with that physicality. So it's not never an either or situation. It's always some degree, some ratio of physicality and energy, physicality and energy and energy and spirit. So you get those, those three categories there and each one has a different effect. And as you get more comfortable operating in that that higher less dense realm that finer realm then you're able to create effects bigger effects with a with less and less uh, effort involved so let's um 
let's uh, explore a little bit about the, this, this feeling of gin, particularly using some of the stuff that we've been working on lately, because we're going to connect up and I'll talk you through it. So it's a, um, so much of, uh, uh, of this, we, we really want to close down the, um, the athleticism and really focus on that inner awareness, which then enables us to expand outward from that and create bigger and bigger effects in our environment once we, once we have that, that inner sense established. And so we can build on that. So uh, why don't you stand up and uh, let's do some stuff. Hmm. And ideally for your gin, you have a partner that you can work with, uh, someone who'll give you a little bit of, you know, something to move against, something to press against. This is a way of, of engaging environment, right? That person is then part of your environment. If you don't have that, you can do it with a with a wall or a tree or or even just with your own self. Just you want to feel how these, these, these things are expressed through the body mind. And it gives you some feedback that allows you to, to turn off some of the switches that, that put you in the wrong part of your brain, put you into that, that fear mode, which causes you to go into the fight, flight, freeze kind of kind of reaction. You want to get it so that you're getting confidence with this without, without triggering the, uh, the fear response. So let's begin by establishing our three pillars. The feeling of the balls of your feet. Unlock the knees and just settle into that. And reach for the crown of the head. We're activating our central equilibrium. Relax your lower back and allow your sacrum to drop. Open the jade pillow gate at the base of your skull and tuck in the chin. Reach out a little bit with your elbows. Your arms are slightly rounded. Your hands are just sort of hanging from that. And you can feel the energy filling up your hands as you just by standing here. Tuck in your chin and allow that neck to elongate. So you're feeling you're reaching up with the crown of your head and allowing your sacrum to drop and that kind of lengthens your spine. Point your index fingers, feel the energetic coherence. Throughout your whole body, just feel that sense. You're connecting the dots of your connective tissue system so that the whole body mind goes online together. It activates your sense of wholeness. You push away from the earth. And then relax, spiral down and turn and relax your hip joints. So you're feeling that release here at the quad. That way, by reaching with the elbows and opening the quad, opening the jade pillow gate, we're unkinking the hose so that allows the energy to flow more freely. So by grounding the energy in our physicality, 
we create this gin, which has sort of a feedback loop on the chi. That is the more grounded and the more gin you have, the more chi seems to be produced which then allows you to upgrade your wiring so that you can circulate even more chi. So this, by taking it away from just focusing on the energy and putting it on to the negative pole, the body, you actually create a bigger circuit that allows the energy to amplify even more. And going back to our immune system, the more you can do this, the more you can create a powerful field and circulate it well, the more you're able to create this Wei Qi. It's sort of like, like a force field around you that, that enables you to expand your, expand your energy, radiate, radiate out from your center. And this has a... Uh, this Wei Qi has uh, the, an effect on the energy system like the immune system has. It, it said that it wards off pernicious influences. So sink into your heels without leaning backward. So you still want to reach up at the crown of your head. You still want to feel your central equilibrium, but now you're centering in your heels. So we've gone from a very young, expansive energy to a yin, contractive one. We're allowing the energy to go down and in, go down through the feet and into the earth, grounding that energy and allowing the yang chi of the heavens to come down through the crown, move through the various energy centers in your body, exit through your feet. It also allows the yin chi of the earth to rise, mingle with your body and exit through the top of your head. You create this circuit that your body mind is part of this bigger circuit, this circuit that includes the chi of the big chi, the chi of heavens and earth. So right now we're we're doing the minimum on in terms of physicality to create a big effect in terms of, of amplifying the chi. So now we're gonna move into the physical realm by sinking to the balls of your feet. And just feel the shift in your energy as you make contact with the balls of your feet. As your weight goes a little bit forward, you feel like you're kind of on a, the edge of a diving board, you're, you're, you're balanced, but you're also, there's a sense of what's next. There's, there's, it's going someplace. What, what, what else is possible here? Now reach with your wrists. Extend the fingers. Open your back between your shoulder blades. Feel your fingertips. Feel like you've got claws there in your fingertips. In doing this, we are activating the wood chi. This is the, is the liver chi. It gets, it gets things, um, gets them moving. It's the wood energy is like the energy of springtime. It, it excites us to to expansion, going from yin, the yin of winter, to the yang of summer. So feeling those, those fingernails activates that. 
Now sink into your heels. But still feel that connection. Feel that energy in your fingertips. Feel it connecting with your the toes in your in your feet. So we're also by doing this, we are activating the meridians in the toes, in the, the ones that, that have their their endpoints in the toes and the and, and in the and, and the fingers. Both starting and end, ending points there. So we're activating our meridians. So now feel your coccyx, your tailbone, and get the feeling of a tail. So we're like you're a big dragon and you've got this very long tail. And what this does by feeling you're moving from the tail, so just kind of wag that tail a little bit. And this activates the conception vessel and the governing vessel to the two major vessels in your body mind. And just feel that connection from your fingernails to the tip of your tail. And then slow, slow that down. Keep that feeling in the tail. Sink into your heels and then bring your hands down. Just feel into your body mind and just notice the energy that's getting circulated throughout the whole system. With that, just that little bit of physicality that we in, we engage there, we have been able to create a rather substantial effect on the energy system. Yeah. Important to be able to go back to the yin place now, and to take that energy in. In fact. Rotate your palms forward and open your chest, open your shoulders, open your neck and eat the chi. Allow it to come in and circulate through your body mind. And do what it has to do, do what it needs to do assimilate it so it becomes part of you. You're allowing your energy field to expand. You're also upgrading your wiring. And then rotate your hands back. Let's sink into the balls of your feet. Reach with the wrists. Reach with the fingers. Feel those claws on your fingernails. Feel your tail. And reach with the right hand and wag your tail. And as you do that, you're as you reach forward with your right hand, your head goes to the left. Now your head goes to the right, reach forward with your left hand, wag your tail. You're feeling that connection between the, your left hand and your tail. Right hand, wag your tail.
feel the poles in opposition between your two hands, the yin hand pulling in as your right, the yang hand, the right hand reaching out. Feel the poles in opposition between your hands and your tail. So we're connecting up the whole system to connect up the whole body mind and amplifying the field. Left hand, wag your tail, reach with your head. You're opening up the meridians in your neck and your shoulders. Reach with your right hand. Pull back with your left, wag your tail. Wag your tail, reach with your head. Reach with your fingers. The right hand. Your left hand. And pause. Now imagine that you're going through those motions without actually doing it. So you're moving your right hand forward, you're wagging your tail, moving your head. Now your left hand. Now your right hand. Feel that. Don't just imagine it, feel it in your body as you're doing it. Your body is set up to make those motions. You're just not executing them. This is how we create Jin. We get this, what's called a readiness potential. The whole nervous system is set up, it's ready to execute, but your, your spirit, your Shen is saying, no, we're not. We're just, we're gonna, hang here a moment and just feel the potentiality in the movements in your left hand. Moving your hands down, sink into your heels. Rotate your palms, open your chest, open your shoulders, eat the chi. Rotate the hands back. All this inward looking is um, the Chinese name for it is Nei Shi. Is that you're, we're by that the scientific name for it is interoception. You're bringing your awareness inside so that you're, you're noticing all that stuff that gets taken for granted. And by doing that, by bringing your conscious awareness to that, you are opening up to an expanded state of being. So sink into the balls of your feet, reach with your wrists, hands come up, reach with those fingers, feel your tail. Now we're gonna do super slow now. You're gonna wag your tail, Reach with your head. Now here, you wanna feel your spine, your scapular, shoulder, elbow, 
wrist, finger. Feel that. Feel that all connected up through the body and to your tail, which is part of it's part of your spine. Wag your tail to the left. Reach with the head. Your spine. Shoulder or scapula. Shoulder. Elbow. Wrist. Fingers. Feel that connection all the way through. Feel the connection to the tail. Feel the connection to the feet. Feel the connection to the top of your head. This is merging of physicality and, and energy is what's creating the jinn. Wag your tail to the right as you feel your spine. You're reaching with your head. You're feeling your spine, your scapula, your shoulder, elbow, wrist, fingers. Feel that extension. Feel all the way to the tip of your tail. Feel that extension all the way through. Feel all the way through your feet and into the earth. Wag your tail to the left. Head, tail, spine, scapula, shoulder, elbow, wrist, fingers. Feel the poles in opposition between your two hands. Feel all the way to the tip of your tail. Reach with the crown of your head. All these things at once and do them, but don't worry about them. Just have that, that awareness there, but you're not having to think about it. You're just doing it. It comes first you think until you don't have to think anymore. And then go back to center, reaching out, feeling your fingers, feeling your toes, your tail, open between your shoulder blades, your scapula. Feel that whole body energetic connection. Hands come down, sink into your heels. Rotate your palms, open the chest, open the shoulders, open the neck, eat the chi. Feel the chi in the marrow of your bones. Feel the electricity in your skin. Feel the flow of blood throughout your body. Feel the pulsing. Come back to center, rotate. Allow the chi to circulate now on its own. You've created the necessary connections. You've also amplified your field. 
considerably. You're plugged into the big chi. So your body mind will adjust to the correct amount of energy it needs right now. Step in. Take a deep breath. Gather. Put the balls of your feet as you bring your hands up. Feel that young expansion and now sink into your heels and yin, yin, and disappear the chi. You're throwing it away. discarding all the energy that you've been accumulating and throw it away, create space for the nature chi to come in. Feel into the emptiness. Please have a seat. How was that? Any thoughts, questions, complaints? Scott. Wow. <laughs> that was another level. Um, I found when we, a lot of, Pretty much when we, on Tuesdays, when we do this, the last thing that I can let go of is the neck shoulder tension. Um, but I found a, a level, a new level of just releasing into the intrinsic structure in this, in this exercise tonight. And just everything is just, everything just went. Oh, that's wonderful. Long. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. so, yeah, it was, uh, wow. Right. <laughs> <laughs> There's more words there. They just don't want to come out at the moment. Okay. <laughs> Give them a moment. <laughs> Jonathan. As someone, as you know, that had a tail surgically removed in childhood, I am, <laughs> I am fascinated by this imagining a tail and thinking about it. I mean, a solid body, an imaginary tail, and yet the body itself isn't really solid. It's all kinds of things. It can be mostly space, right? It's different things depending on how you, you know, what I, how you look at it or how you feel it, I guess. So I'm wondering for you yourself, how, at what point, how real does that tail become Are you know, because a body can feel more and more like space and an imaginary tail is like all space basically, right? So I'm wondering if you have levels of connection between your imaginary tail and your actual body. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's a really good good point. Um, so yes, and I think it really gets to the the core of uh, of what we're doing here is we're we're training how to create something out of nothing mm -hmm. and endow it with substance we're taking something which is which beyond insubstantial it doesn't exist and turning into something that has uh, mm. th that you can feel it so uh, 
you said you asked me personally what I, uh, I feel my tail. <laughs> and, and, you know, it's something we were playing with in class on, on, on Saturday that is moving from the tail to actually using that, that connection to create gin mm. so that if you just by establishing that those points between your hand and the tail the tip of the mm. tail mm. you're able to create mm. an effect which mm. is cannot be explained in terms of of, of materialism mm. it creates it creates a, a a profound effect. So we're getting into that realm, which the Obi-Wan Kenobi realm there, where, <laughs> you know, we just by creating this, this, you know, I got my Puff the Magic Dragon here, you know, tail going on and, and like, holy smokes, it's able to do things. So I'm, I'm sensing it. And, uh, um, you know, uh, when we played tennis uh, <laughs> a couple of days ago, I was hitting with my tail, <laughs> <laughs> and and it had a a strong effect when I was able to to execute that correctly. The the ball was effortlessly going, you know, much uh, more rapidly and more directly than than mm -hmm. than if I'm just pushing with my arm. So, getting, it's, so it, it's if at the very least it's a it's a way of visualizing your body whole body energetic connection so that you're moving in a state of oneness which mm. it, it can't be bad anyway so mm. so back to your original question how much of it do i feel it's pretty solid so it's your you know the ability to create that it's a different kind of solidity than, than say this, but that's the point I was making before about you know the spectrum. It's like, okay, whenever the ultraviolet becomes as substantial as the infrared, you know, then then we're we're onto something here. Then we can say, okay, mm -hmm. now we can find pick pick a spot, pick a color on the on the spectrum and go there and immediately do the calculations necessary to say how much substantial, how much insubstantial in this particular event to make something happen. Does any of that make sense? <laughs> yeah, I'm really looking forward to uh, blending my racket with my tail now, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I found it really refreshing. <laughs> See you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Richard. So, so if you feel that your tail has some density, it yes. actually it actually increases your leverage uh yes and and in, and in push ads if you've got a good tail nobody could push you over backwards <laughs> uh, absolutely maria was demonstrating that in class on saturdays like she had she had <laughs> she had her tail like you know it was a, it was a long tail it was it was you know it was a an allosaurus tail you know it uh, <laughs> it, it really reached out so it uh she's you know it's like uh, you had to kind of step aside as it went switching by because it can knock you over. <laughs> so that the, the, our ability to, to, to do that, to, to not just imagine, but to manifest these energies in that way kind of opens the door to all the comic book stuff that we love so much. <laughs> you know, it's like, hey, yeah, <laughs> all that stuff is okay. What if, <laughs> you know, why not? <laughs> Let's try it. What, what would I have to do to make that happen? Kind of a thing. Cool. Anybody else? Nothing Scott. like mixing your pop culture metaphors. <laughs> <laughs> we can deal with that here. <laughs> it, it, bring, it brings me right back to Boston University acting classes being a tree i mean we were dragons back in the day too so this is this is just a big yeah. setup for me sure <laughs> that's right <laughs> so you're saying something scott oh i was just gonna say that you know as we were we were doing both sides at the end there and then you had us 
bring our arms out together. So I concentrated on doing both sides at the same time. And that was that was like two more levels up. I mean, that was really, really powerful. And really, um, you can really feel it, you know, really feel it. Substantial, yeah. that's the word. Yeah. There you go. So you included a link there, Jonathan. What was uh, that link is to the dinosaur at the Natural History Museum, uh, the newer one that they got. I, it doesn't do justice, but that tail is is astonishing. Uh, I, if you come to New York, do not miss walking <laughs> underneath that tail. <laughs> cool, Valerie. Well, just so you know, mine is green and yellow. <laughs> Say again. My tail. My tail. It's green and yellow. Green and yellow. <laughs> A very nice tail at that. Yes, it is. <laughs> Excellent choice of colors. <laughs> <laughs> uh, beautiful. Okay, everybody. It's been uh, been terrific. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you, Maria. Okay. Love you, thank Maria. You, Maria. Thank and everybody, thank you, Maria. Everybody get well. Everyone be Everyone get oh, okay. better. Same on YouTube. Thank you. Oh, Maria says thank you, Sam, for buying buying a coffee. So appreciate that. Yes. So uh, uh, yes, keep keep the keep the explorations going. So bye, everybody. Thank you. See you next week. <laughs>